All right, and our team coverage of the severe weather alert continues now with a look at some more of the damage across our region. I want to news reporter Rosie Woods is live in Warwick this morning with more on some trees that fell in that area overnight. Good morning. Well, I'm now on Diamond Hill Road here in Warwick, where I'm told a lot of these homes are still without power. And you can see right over here behind me, there is one large pole that has all of those electrical wires that are now hanging over here. What actually happened, I'm told from Warwick Police, they say that one of the poles on this other street actually started to fall. It started to fall onto a tree. That tree then collapsed, bringing down all of these wires. So this is really a huge mess over here. All cars are being diverted, told to go back. They cannot get through this area. National Grid is here. And we're also being told now that National Grid can't even get a safety pole in here to help bring this other electrical pole back up for a couple of hours. So this will be a very serious issue for most of the morning, possibly even into late afternoon. So definitely be aware of that today. And also, of course, make sure for traffic reasons that you have a detour. If this is an area you usually go through, just be aware that today you will not be able to go through this area. So again, this is just one of the many areas where we've seen a lot of trees down. We've seen a lot of poles down, a lot of debris all over the road. So definitely just be aware of all of that this morning, especially here in Warwick and in the surrounding areas. Live in Warwick, Rosie Woods, Eyewitness News. Moving south in Narragansett, Iowa News reporter Todd Wallace has been in that part of the state for a couple of hours now. And Todd, here in East Providence, we can really feel that wind picking up right now. I can only imagine it's the same situation down along the coast. I'll tell you what, Patrick, two things have happened in the last hour. One, the temperature has dropped, and two, and possibly related, the wind has picked up considerably. And so that's happened. Also, it started to rain just ever so slightly hit or miss as well. Uh, behind me again, you see this topple tree here on Boston Neck Road. I just want to mention that because National Grid arrived here about five or ten minutes ago, so that's good news. They're going to, one, if you look to the right, look to upright this uh, pole here that's resting on the power lines, and then two, contracting someone to remove this topple tree here that's blocking one lane. Now, earlier, we did have someone shoot some video in there against it, just showing how intense the storm was overnight, and you could see how powerful the winds were from this video of the trees, also the flags near the coast here in Narragansett. Again, the wind has picked up considerably, not nearly as bad as it was overnight, but enough to drop the temperature and still create some problems with some branches and tree limbs and also trees. But again, here on Boston Neck Road, National Grid has arrived, and hopefully within the next couple of hours, they can upright this telephone pole and also get someone to remove this tree. Reporting live in Narragansett, Todd Wallace, Eyewitness News. Severe weather alert continues. Close look at those power outages we've been mentioning all morning. Those intense winds overnight brought down a number of trees as we've been showing you and power lines across the area. And that has left thousands of people in the dark across southern New England. Eyewitness News reporter Julianne Lima spoke with National Grid officials a short time ago. She has the latest from the breaking news center. That's right, Danielle and Patrick. We actually have more power outages in our area now than we did five years ago when Hurricane Sandy swept through. As has been the case all morning, more than 200 households are still in the dark this morning. Now, we, uh, dozens of schools have canceled classes. We actually just learned Portsmouth Public Schools dismissed early for the day. And along with that, a spokesperson from National Grid tells us three local hospitals also lost power last night. You know, I can tell you that Kent County Hospital was out for a while. Um, Fatima was out for a while. Memorial was out for a while. But I'm happy to report that, you know, all three of those are back up and, um, you know, in good shape now. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that uh, the schools will be, you know, back in service tomorrow. And here are the latest numbers. 141,000 National Grid customers in Rhode Island are still without power. Nearly 33,000 National Grid customers are in the dark in Bristol County, Mass. And nearly 56,000 Eversource customers in eastern Massachusetts are also still without power. That's actually up 4,000 from about an hour ago. Now, if you are just waking up and you see any downed wires or damage, or if you lose power, here are the phone numbers to call. National Grid customers can call 1-800-465-1212. Eversource customers in Massachusetts can call 1-800-592-2000. Now, Rhode Island State Police told us earlier this morning they responded to about nine crashes overnight. Coming up in about 30 minutes, we'll show you video of a crash involving a National Grid truck and a box truck. Reporting live in the breaking news center, I'm Julianne Lima, Eyewitness News. 
And stay with Eyewitness News and the Pinpoint Weather Team all throughout the day as we keep those uh, school closings and delays updated on our website. You can also find the latest on the power outages and flight delays on WPRI.com. And don't forget, your latest Pinpoint Weather updates can be found if you download that Pinpoint Weather app.